Guys, this is Trey with Total Justice Gaming. Alright, we're gonna do a deck profile uh, on my ninja deck from the uh, Ninja Gauntlet. Is it will ever forever be known from the video? Um, all right, so I want to get into this really quick. All right, so the buddy we have Biakio. All right, play four copies of the buddy, obviously, because it's buddy. Um, ah, all right, so let's see what we got here. So this is a it's really good stats. It's five one one. Uh, it's size one. In the battle, this unit attack. If you have a card with Tsuchikage in the name on the field or in the soul of a monster, for this turn it gets double attack. I mean, that's that's just really good. It's got good stats. It can attack almost anything defensively, and double attack's just amazing. And then the other effect is um, if the card's in the soul of a card on your field, that card can attack your opponent even if they have a monster center, so it kind of gives it a shadow dive. So, um... There's that. That's the buddy. And then, of course, we play four versions, four copies of the new Tsuchikage uh, Kushira mode. Uh, it's a 5 2 1 with the counter ability, uh, counter act. You can choose a ninja on your field and pay one gauge. If you do for this turn, the next time that card will be destroyed, it remains on the field, and you can only use the ability once per turn. So. We play four of it because that's just ridiculously good. You can put a card in center and save it over and over again. You can save itself. You can save anything else. I mean, it just makes the whole thing work really well. All right, so we play four of that. Then uh, right now we're currently only playing two copies of the SD Tsuchikage. Uh, mainly it's because I only have two. Um, any you guys out there have any that are extra for trade or whatever, uh, message Joe on the channel and I will definitely try and get them from you. Um, but okay, we're gonna go into this. It's a 3-1-1 one, one with the, when it enters the field, I can pay one gauge. If I do, call a monster with Biakia in its name from your drop zone by paying its call cost. So there, there are ways that immediately first turn set up and drop Biakia in the drop zone. I'll get into those a little bit later. And then the other part of the, the other effect is if it's in the soul of a ninja monster, that monster gets plus one, plus one. So I mean, that's, that's, it, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it, it helps with stuff. I mean, there's only like probably one card in the whole, de well, there's two copies of that one card in the whole deck that it would actually be in the soul in. It's mainly there to just like, I have no cards in hand. I top deck it, call it, pay the gauge, call the Byakuya from the drop zone, and then now I've got three attacks on the board for one gauge and two monsters, and it's, it's pretty good. So we play two of that right now. Um, I play two and two of the original of Byakuya and Tsuchikage. Yeah. Play two and two of the original. Um, their their stats are the same as as the uh, Kushina mode and uh, Shura mode, but um, I play two of this one just because we really just need Tsuchikage's in the deck. Um, it's I mean it's a good it's a good attacker. Plus if I have to, if I have a lot of uh, non monster cards in my hand, it does really good to pitch them to keep him on the board and to save himself. So it's pretty good. And then uh, we will play two of the other one. Uh, the other Bakuya, uh, the original, because it does have Shadow Dive automatically, and then I can constantly restand it. So, I mean, that's really good. Um, but, okay, let's move on. I play four copies of low rank ninja. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Rika Zukimaru. Um, he's a 5-1-1. One, one. I mean, he's got great stats. He's size 1. Everything we're going through so far is size 1s, and the, the stats are good. It hits it hits numbers, so. But its ability is uh, group training when it enters the field. If you have another size 1 ninja on your field, draw a card. I mean, drawing cards is always good in every game, so always want to draw a very good card. And then, speaking of drawing cards, we play four copies of Electric Ninja Sheeden. Um, he's a 3-1-1 with the uh, cyber analysis ability. You may discard a ninja arts from your hand, pay a gauge, and if I do, draw two cards. 
its ability can only be used once per turn, but like I said earlier, drawing cards is just amazing, and you drop him first turn, pitch one, and draw two is just good to start out with, and then you drop this one right beside it and draw a third one. It just it just helps make get the hand advantage very early. All right, we'll play two of this guy. He's, he's a little old. He came out of one of the old troll decks. Um, Agent Ninja Linzo. So he's a size two. He's a three, two, six. He's got great defense. You drop him in the center. It, it makes it harder for the opponent to get over you um, defensive wise. And then um, when this card enters the field, search your deck. It's a cast cost or call cost pay one gauge. But when it enters the field, search your deck for a secret sword lethal formation and, in its name and put it into your hand and shuffle the deck. So I mean, obviously we're gonna, I'm gonna be showing you secret swords later on, but um, it's a really good card. The deck thins out, gets me the cards I need. First turn, drop it, then I can final phase instantly, and everybody just hates that. So play two of it. I play two copies of our other size two, um, Yumi Ninja Shuha. Um, Sweetheart. So, sweetheart. Thank you, master Japanese man. All right. Don't touch my stick. Shut up. All right. Uh, he's a 5 2 3. Uh, call calls, pay one gauge. When it enters the field, I can search my deck for one size one or less ninja, put it in my hand, shuffle the deck. So I mean, this is this is this is our basic toolbox card. Like he's he's good. I can get. All right, so we're basically out of monsters right now. So everything you saw, I can get any monster I want aside from the Agent Ninja Lenzo. So any any so for any situation, I can just tutor to whatever I need. I can get our plus one, drop him if I have another size one on the field to gain a draw. I can get Sheeden if I want to ditch cards that are clogging my hand to draw two, and plus that way. I can get whichever piece I'm missing out of these two, or the originals if I ever go into them, but mostly I just go into these two. Or I can get the SD Suchikage and search for this one from the drop zone and just plus even more. I mean, half the time we call him, use his ability, search, and then we'll end up calling over top of him because we don't even use him for his crit or anything or normally even attack unless we just absolutely have to. But um, he's, he's good for deck thinning and tutoring what I need. And then uh, we're going to the spells now. So I play two copies of Art of Explosive Hades Fall. This is... It's really good. I mean, even if our opponent doesn't play that many size ones, we still set this up to get to Gyakia. And, uh, okay, so we're going to get into this one real quick. Um, cast cost, pay one gauge, and choose a card from our deck and put it face down in this card soul. Okay, that's the cast cost. When the ability, when a monster enters your opponent's field, you may look at this card's soul and reveal it. If their build card has the same size as that monster that entered the opponent's field, destroy the monster and deal two damage to your opponent, then destroy this monster. Really, really so, I mean, it's not technically nullifying cards, uh, calls of monsters, but it's uh, instant destruction, which, when you set it, it makes the opponent have to think about what they're going to do. It wastes their monsters on board, plus it deals two damage. It's really good. But like I said, we mainly play this card just to drop Byakuya in the drop zone immediately. Normally we always open up with this card. Somehow we only play two and we always open up with this card. We instantly put Byakuya in unless the circumstances call for something else, which normally they won't. So it's always going to be a size one. But it gets it in the drop zone fast so we can make the play with the SD Suchikage. Alright, and then... We play, we only play two Clear Serenities, and the reason why is because I play one copy of this other card, uh, Rayton, the Art of uh, Stored Electricity. Alright, so Clear Serenity, it's just the cat, it's the counter card. Uh, cast, put three gauge from the top of your deck, in, uh, put three cards from the top of your deck in the gauge. You can only cast it once per turn. That's your initial free gauge card. Now, we only have room for three gauge cards in this deck. That's, so we play two of this and one of this, and the reason we play one of this is because late game this card comes in handy. So it's the same thing; it gauges, but it's so it's counter. Put top two cards of your deck engaged. Then if you have five or less life, put two additional cards from the top of your deck in your gauge. So it gets us a plus one off of it late game. So it gets us the four, which helps a lot. 
Um, it makes better plays for final phase go off. So we just right now we like this mix up with the two the two and the one, but uh, that's our gauge cards for this. Um, we play we play a lot of cards at three, which is very weird. So I play three art of body replacement. This is our shield that um, can cast it during attack on opponent's turn. If it's not link attack, it nullify the attack. We'll play three of that. And then I play three copies of the Catan Blazing Armors. Um, you only cast it if a monster on your field to be attacked. Choose the monster on your field, give it plus five for this battle, plus five defense for this battle, and deal one damage to your opponent. So it kind of burns them, gives you plus five. It doesn't give them counterattack, which if it did, I think it probably would be broken at this point. But um, it's a good defensive card, too. And then we play three copies of the Demon Way copy of Chillax, the uh, pay one gauge the next time you'd be dealt damage, it's reduced to zero and you gain a life. Um, and for some reason we play this one of, which we're going to get into, and I honestly don't remember why I play one of it anymore. But uh, we play this card at a one of, uh, Doan Chaos Pebbles, it's a goofy ass name. Um, so we play one of it. It's a, you can only cast it when a ninja on your field is destroyed. Destroy a size two or less monster. I'm reading it. I will turn it around in a second. Calm down. Destroy a size two or less monster on the opponent's field and a spell on the opponent's field. I think our original reason, and this is kind of a stupid reason to do it, uh, we tech this in here just to play against our other friend Fuller. He was playing a lot of Osmodi at the time, and as you know, his deck requires set spells to run smoothly, and every monster in there except for three, uh, his two inverse uh, Omni Lords and the one champion wrestler are all size two or less monsters. So. I guess the reason why we did this is uh, mainly just to mess with him. It's a one of tech for mainly that targets just that deck. I mean, of course, it works against other decks too, but it mainly just hates Osmodi a lot. Um, and he's going to watch this video later and then have words to say about this. But um, yeah, we only tech that one of. You don't even have to tech this. It's actually a stupid card. Um, Alright, so we got through the spells. I'm gonna go to my impact. So I played two copies of the uh, impact monster Ghoul Deity Gojimaru. Um, so his stats are he's at 8 2 8. Um, cast call cost is pay 2 gauge and put a monster with Suchikage and a monster with Byakuya in the soul from your field. Um, Let's see, at the end of the battle, if this card attacks, you may discard ninja arcs. If you do, for this turn, it gets double attack. So, if you have extra ninja arcs that are clogging your hand, which I'll show you where we get the extra ones a lot in a second, um, it, it gives you double attack. The reason why we only run two is not because I only have two. I have four. I just like the way the deck runs when I run these and the secret swords because it gives me options. It doesn't focus the deck all on this because I've run into problems when I just played this and my opponent will not let me keep these on the board and that became a real issue because I'd have to hold on to them in hand and then I would end up getting behind in field control and life. So I decided to mix it up and only put two in here. The other part of this ability is counter. Uh, when your opponent casts a spell, you may discard a ninja arch from your hand and pay two gauge. If you do nullify the spell, cast by your opponent and deal two damage to your opponent. All right, so I'm gonna leave these out here for a second and we'll get back to these. Um, so obviously, like I said earlier with the Agent Ninja, we play the Secret Sword. We play three Secret, secret Sword lethal formations. Um, all right, so for, I, you guys probably know it's one of the yes. oldest cards in the game. Uh, set this card. Uh, cast cost. Choose a card from your hand, deck, or drop zone. Put it face down into this card's soul. If you search your deck, shuffle it. And then you may look at this card, the ability, you may look at this card's soul and cast the secret sword from the soul by paying its cast cost at any point in time. So we'll play three of those. Alright. 
finally now, got more tyrant healers. Now, yeah. the only formations we play right now is we play two copies of Star Crusher. Star Crusher is the one that nullifies a spell. You pay three gauge to cast it if it's in the secret sword. Nullify spell, deals three damage to your opponent. When your opponent casts a spell, you can use this. We only play we play two of that. Uh, that is the major one you want to go into. Every deck aside from Fozzy to Hawker runs spells. And nullifying spells at crucial times is key a lot of the time. So then we play one of the uh, Secret Sword Comet. If uh let's see, I'm gonna show it to you really quick. There it is. I need to read this really quick. It's been a while since I've done it. Alright, so this one, if you're in, if you have it in Secret Sword and a monster with five thousand power or more on your opponent's field is attacking you alone, you pay three gauge, destroy the monster, and deal three damage to your opponent. Alright, I'm gonna be honest, this card wasn't in my opinion that good when it first came out and now and this is gonna sound like it's a hate card again which it's not uh now there's ozzy de hako ozzy de hako is i hate that card i'm gonna be honest i you see me play against fuller a lot it's a good deck and it's a if i had the deck i probably would play it but honestly i hate that card that card is almost in every way unfair and if you build the deck properly, it's extremely unfair. Um, this card hits it, but this card targets, I mean, it sounds like it it's a hate card for that, but it targets pretty much everything. Anything with any good attack power, so any Dragon World decks, uh, any, I mean, it can target Fifth Omni, it can get rid of drums, it can get rid of uh, Osmodai's new attack stat now for their base attack for any Osmodai deck is 5,000, so it can target that. Um, any big hitting monsters that would attack you alone, it can just blow them up. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a good one of for that situation. And then the, um, we'll move on to the last one. Um, I put this in here uh, only because if I drop Gojimaru or something else with a high defense, like the Agent Ninja, where they have to link attack, or if my opponent's trying to get around my shields that say that they can't nullify it if it is a link attack, I put this one in here. I put Secret Sword Glittering Star in the deck as a one of uh, same exact I mean it has to be in secret sword obviously um, it has to if my if I'm being link attacked I misread that earlier so if I'm being link attacked so it's basically if my opponent's trying to get around my shields they know I have one I might tech this I'm probably gonna take this out and put it as like maybe a side deck card but it's pay through gauge like all of them are pay through gauge Pay through gauge, nullify the attack, and deal five damage to your opponent. It's really only in there if they try to nullify my um, my shields, or if if they're trying to play around my shields, which in my mind's nullified them. But all right, so all these cards can be put into Secret Sword from your hand, but half the time you don't want to do that because that minuses you on hand. So you can drop them because they're all ninja arts. So you can drop them for sheet in. You can drop them for Gojimaru, and you can get them out of your hand that way, and then you can just get them back from the drop zone. I mean, half the time, it's almost a better mind game to mess with your opponent if they know what you put in there, for the simple fact then that most of the time they're going to be thinking about, oh, i got to play around this, and so mainly, mainly they're going to play around the spell one. If, if oh I gotta play around it so uh, uh, I'll have to play one spell and then play another one to get rid of that so I don't take the three damage and I don't lose the spell that I wanted to play the most and stuff like that so if they see it being put in there it's even more ridiculous than if they didn't it's more of just a mind game with them so half the time if they're not if I don't get them from the deck I always put them in the drop zone I never put any from my hand I will always ditch them to plus off of my other abilities first and let them know. If they pay attention, they know. If they paid attention to what was in the drop zone, I don't have to show them when I pull it from the drop zone. So if they paid attention, 
they know it's there. If not, then they still get screwed over either way. But if they were paying attention, it's kind of just a mind game because then they're trying to play around that specific card. Especially when you get them and it's late game and they're already low on health. They're always trying to play around Secret Sword. But, um, guys, that was my ninja deck profile. I am actually probably going to change this. Joe wanted me to put this on there because it was the fluke ninja gauntlet. But, um, that's it. Total Gaming. Peace.